Hi, this is Doug Auberg from Carlson Software, and today we're going to talk about custom attributes. When I talk about custom attributes in this lesson, what I'm talking about is the ones you see in Field to Finish that you may or may have not paid any attention to. So if I open up Field to Finish and take a look at a code table, just any code table, you will see a typical setup. In this case, it's a FES, which stands for a flared end section. We've selected a symbol called FES, which just brings in that little trapezoid-shaped symbol. So what, do I, what I want to focus on is this button right here. It says Custom Attributes. And if you've ever bought to click on that, you will see this category. And what we're going to do, and basically the way this works, is we're going to create a block, another block, and that, that can have or not have a symbol associated with it. But what it will have is attributes set in that block. Each one will have a tag. And with that tag on that attribute, uh, um, we will then be able to assign values for it. So the way this works is we first set up uh, a block, name the attributes of whatever we want, and then we're going to populate them into a field code in Field to Finish. So let's get started and show you the step-by-step -step directions to do that. The first thing I like to do is open up an existing symbol from a symbol library. So if you take, it your, take a look at your symbol library, you will see all the different symbols we have for points. And I like to find one that looks close to something I'm going to use and start with that and then modify it accordingly. So I'm going to open up a symbol called SPT20, which is included in your software. Now the reason why I like to start with this is because this already has a good scale size that you can look at when you start creating these attributes so you're not guessing on how big the text is going to be. It also has the insertion point which is 0, 0 and but we don't want to add it right to this so I'm just going to simply do a save as and rename the file. So I'm going to move this to another location other than the support template where the SPT20 came from. And I'm going to name this UPOL. So I now have a new drawing called UPOL. Now the attributes we can create can be on any layer that you want, but you want to think ahead a little bit because you may want to freeze those attributes. You might want to think about what dis layer they're going to be on in case you want to show utility pole with the description with or without the attributes that we're about to create. So I'm going to create a quick layer in Layer Manager, and I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm, I'm going to call it um, ATT dash DEC for attribute description. And just to help keep myself clear, I'm going to give that a different color. And set that current. I am now going to create attributes for this poll. Now thinking ahead again a little bit of what kind of information we, we might want to gather for a utility poll, we of course will have the description of the utility poll we might want to have the material of the utility pole, the number of the utility pole, and perhaps the number of wires on the utility pole. So let's use those ideas for attributes and create them. So you begin by going under the Draw menu, under Text. Down at the bottom there's a flyout for attributes, and we're going to hit Define Attribute. So the first description, or the first tag we're going to make is for the description. So let's just call it description. Make it easy. Now you always want to make sure that you leave the prompt and especially default fields blank. We're going to set the text height at 0.8. And we're going to pick a location for that. So we're just going to go upside next to the utility pole a little bit, about right there. We're going to repeat that command just simply by hitting the Enter key. And we're going to hit this button right here that says Align Below Previous Attribute. 
because that'll help keep everything lined up. So let's then add the number for the number of the pole, and everything else will be left the same. And we'll hit OK. We're going to do it again and say material. And one more time for a number of wires. Now you remember in the tag you can't have spaces and remember again to leave the default field blank. So there's our four attributes that we're going to add for a utility pole. I'm going to save that and go to the next step. The next step now is to add that new symbol that we created with the attributes into our symbol layer library. We're going to go up under settings and find our symbol library. And we can have custom categories if we would like. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a category. I'm going to make it a top level category and I'm going to call it custom. This gives me the a, ca a special category that I can save and export and share with others, but it also helps me organize the ones that I created myself. And from there, we are now just going to simply import that symbol that we just created. So I highlight custom, and import symbols that I'm going to migrate to the location of that. And there's my U-Pole that I just created. It's going to ask me if I want to copy this locally, and I'm going to say yes. So I now have that in my Sybil library. Save that and exit. We now go into another drawing. I've created a, just a sample drawing called Tests. And I always recommend that you have some drawing that you use to create and test out any kind of customization that you do, creating line types, symbols, playing with a field to finish file. You need to work with these things to get them to work the way you want. And so it's important that you have something that you keep going back to and continue with this experience. So now we're going to go into Field to Finish. And we're going to use this same Field to Finish table. And we're going to edit the codes. And I'm going to go under the Utilities key. And I'm going to add a symbol for that utility pole. So I'm going to add a new code table. This code I'm going to use for consistency. I'm going to use the same description, U poll, for a field code name, full name, utility poll. The description, I'm going to use the attribute block. So that means whatever you type in the field is what's going to populate here in the description field. That gives you the ability to rename things right from the field if you f find that that's important. The layer is going to go on the existing telephone layer and this is a point. The attribute format is set to none and the separate attribute layers is also set to none. I'm going to go now go select and I can find my custom category. And there's my one and only custom utility pole that I created. Then I hit custom attributes and this dialog box comes up and you hit to now to populate this with the attributes that we created we are going to just simply hit find custom attributes and in comes those descriptions that we just created. So now we have the tags from the attributes that we created. So I now go to the value section of this and I can hit the button next to that that says set and you will see a drop down menu of a lot of different things that you can do or that you can use or add the information for. Now in this case this is redundant that we have a description field and we already have previously had a description field. The reason why I've done it this way is to just simply carry the description in the same attribute block that or the of called you poll uh, instead of having the description in the typical Carlson block that comes in the uh, with the point number description and elevation 
I want to have the ability to be able to keep all of these attributes together. So all I have to do on the description is say description. It's going to mimic whatever we type in the field. For the number, I'm going to hit set. And I'm going to say note by sequence. Now what that means is in the field, if you, especially if you're using serve CE, you can set that up to ask you these questions. And the crew then can type a note in the field uh, as to the number, material, and the number of wires, and it can be prompted. So it's going to populate this in a note in sequence. So sequence number one, when I say note by sequence, the first note is going to be for the number. I'm going to do the same thing for the material. Note by sequence, but that sequence is going to be number two. The number of wires is going to be number three. So that is the setup. Now let's take a look how to make that work. So let's start by creating a point. I'm just going to and add that to a coordinate file. So I'm just going to use draw locate points. And I'm going to put in a point number 1022. And I'm just going to screen pick and randomly select a point right here. I'm going to go ahead and give it an elevation of 100. And for a description, I'm going to use the U-pole description that we just created. And that's it. Now, what layer this goes on and how it looks exactly right now, it doesn't matter because we're going to reprocess this through field to finish. But what I do have to do is add the information that for those attributes. So if I double click on this, there is a category. If we look at these tabs up here, there's a category for notes. Now, remembering that you can set this up in the field data collector in Surf CE to prompt the field crew uh, to fill in these attributes in the correct order. Remembering how we created them, the first number that we had, the first attribute that we had was the poll number. So I'm going to say that that's poll number 453. The second attribute was what material it was made out of. So I have wood was the material. And the third one was how many wires there are on the pole. I'm going to say there's five wires. I'm going to hit OK. So now when I go back into field to finish, and I'm going to process point number 1022, when we process this, we get the information we're looking for. We have the symbol drawn. We have the description of view pole that came from the code, the number of the pole, the material that was made out of, and how many wires we have. Now we can elaborate on these by presetting a prefix or suffix. So if we go back into field to finish, let's see if more we can do with this. So if I'm going to go back and I'm going to find that utility pool code right here. And if I edit that, go back into my symbol and custom attributes, you will see over on the far right is the ability to have a prefix and a suffix. There's also decimals, so you can control the significant digit that this is displayed. Uh, in this particular example, it doesn't matter because we're not using numbers, but if they were elevations or some other numerical value, that might be a control you'd like to put in there. So we're going to put on the number. What I'm going to do is, I'm, for the number, I'm going to put a prefix of the number symbol. For the material, I'm going to go ahead and write the word material equals, or better yet, the colon. The number of wires, I'm going to put for a suffix, space, W-I-R-E-S. I put the space in there so it won't crowd the, the poll number. And I'm going to hit OK there. OK here, save, exit, and reprocess that to that point. And now I have this set up with the prefix and suffix included. So that is one example of how to use custom attributes, just to add some additional information. Now, I want to go into something a little bit uh, more elaborate, and that is to be able to utilize custom attributes to do more than just add a description. You have the ability 
in Carlson to add formulas or equations to a custom attribute. So I have one already set up. I'm going to go back into field to finish and take a look at a drain manhole that I have. So if I take a look at this, it's a DMH is the code. And for the symbol, I have a special symbol that I have already set up called invert. Now if I look at the custom attributes here, you will see that I've created six um, attributes called invert one through invert six. And for these, for the value, and I did this exactly the same way as the utility pull, but for the value, when I hit set, one of the options is equation. So you can hit the equation, and then you can put in the equation is Z minus D1. Now the D1 is completely customizable. That can be whatever you want that to be. You could have it invert A, B, C, D. Um, I use D for the depth, the down from the rim elevation. The Z, of course, is what's shot in the field, which in my normal workflow would be the rim elevation. And I've set that up for each one of these. So it's D1, D2, and D3, 4, 5, and 6. So in this particular attribute block, I have the ability to contain, uh, collect six inverts in the field. So let's test this one out. I'm going to cancel this for a second. I'm going to set another point. Again, just draw locate points, and I'm randomly going to set a point here. I'm also going to give it an elevation of 100. And for this, I'm going to use the code DMH. So the way that this is coded is if I double click on here, uh, this is something that's probably going to be more frequently done back in the office than in the field. But they could, if they wanted to, type that in as a note right in the data collector. So you just say simply depth 1 equals, we'll call it 5 feet. Depth 2 equals 5.3 feet. Depth 3 equals 4.8. And depth 4 equals 6.2 feet. Then we go into field to finish, and we're going to process point number 1023. And when we do, you can see that the manhole, drain manhole, is labeled with the rim uh, and invert elevations. So there are a couple ways of using custom attributes to add more information to your field work, and hopefully this will also help you speed up your field work and the preparation of an existing conditions plan. Thank you for listening.